Hi, it's Chris P. Williams here. I hope you're well. This is just a quick tutorial on how to use the undo paintbrush within Affinity Photo. I've got here a picture of the Statue of Liberty, which I took quite a few years back. And I've got another picture here of an Egypt Air 747, I think. And I'm going to return to the Statue of Liberty photo. What I'm going to try and do is combine these two photographs, remove a sky on the statue and replace it with the aeroplane photo. So to do that, I'm going to click on the flood select tool, which is a little magic wand, fifth down on the left toolbar. I'm going to go to my tolerance slider and reduce that to about eight. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to show you why. If I left click in this area of blue, telling Affinity I want to remove that sky, you can see it's selected areas of the statue, which is not what I wanted. So I'll press control and D to deselect that. And I'm going to click on my tolerance slider and take it down to about eight. So this makes it less tolerant to other colors outside the selected color. So again, I'm just going to left click now again to make another selection. And you can see here, it's now selected mostly just a sky. It's missed a little area of cloud here, but we're going to address that now. I'm going to go to the add button in the top left corner, and I'm going to left click in the middle of that cloud. And it's now included that in the selection. Now, normal practice to make a selection like this, you'll use the feather tool just to soften the edges slightly. So we're going to do that now. You can press select on the menu at the top and just select feather. The shortcut is shift F6, as you can see. And we are presented then with the feather selection radius slider. You can use this slider to make your feather selection, but because I'm only interested in small numbers, it's far easier to type it in the checkbox. So I'm just going to type in two pixels. So just type in two and apply. And I'm going to press delete. And now I'm going to press Control and D or Command and D on a Mac to get rid of my marching ants. And I'm going to press Control and I'm going to use the scroll wheel on my mouse just to zoom in. So I'm keeping my finger on the control and moving my mouse slider forward. You can see there we've now got a soft selection. I'm going to press Control and zero to zoom out. And you'll notice here just under the crown, I've missed two areas of blue. I did that deliberately, believe it or not, so that I can make a further selection. So making sure that my flood select tool is selected still, we're just going to left click in that area of blue and make sure the add button is pressed in the top left corner. And we're just going to click on that bottom area of blue that we missed. And this time I'm not going to feather it. I'm going to do that deliberately, deliberate mistake as it were, and just press delete and then Control and D. Now, I'm going to go to my second photo of the aeroplane and I'm going to press Control and A or Command and A on a Mac to select the whole photo. And I'm going to press Control and C to copy it. We're going to return to the stature photograph and I'm going to press Control and V. And that pastes the aeroplane picture onto our statue. You can see here it's actually pasted it on top of the statue, which is not what we want. So I'm going to left click on that layer and just drag it down using the mouse to beneath the statue photograph. And you can see now the sky is behind a statue and that's where we want it. I'm going to go to the move tool, which is a little arrow key on the left toolbar, second down. I'm going to left click, making sure that my aeroplane background is selected. And I'm just going to drag the aeroplane using the mouse and keeping my finger on the left mouse button and just drag it to where I want it. And I'm happy with it there. So it just makes it a little bit more interesting as a photo. And it's at this point, I think, well, oh, that looks OK. But wait a minute. This area here, just in the corner of the crown, looks a little bit jagged. So let's just zoom in, pressing control and using the scroll wheel and hey, presto little jagged edges. I must have forgotten to use the feather tool. Okay, all's not lost. Let's just go back to our statue layer just by left clicking it to select it. And we're going to go to our undo brush tool. And it's just below midway on the left toolbar. It's a little brush with a little red handle 
and an arrow. So we're just going to left click on that to select it. And you can see we've now got a brush tool cursor and we can increase and decrease the size of that brush using the square brackets on our keyboard. The right square bracket makes it bigger and the left square bracket makes it smaller. So all we need to do is paint over the area where we've made our mistake and not selected a smooth selection. And you can see as we paint over the original photograph that we started with returns, but only for that area where we're painting. The rest of the area, if I zoom out control and zero, the rest of the photos unaffected. So now we can zoom back in and we can click on our flood select tool. And again, left click in those two areas, making sure we press the add button before we make our second selection and just left click in the second selection. And we've selected both those areas. And this time we remember we need to feather and we're going to press shift and F6 to bring up our feather selection. And we're going to type in two and press apply. And then we're going to press delete. And if I press Ctrl and D to get rid of our marching ants, you can see we've now got a smooth selection for both those areas around the crown. And if I press Ctrl and zero to zoom out, I'm quite happy now with the overall look of a photo. So I hope that explains to you how the undo brush can be useful to you. If you do make a little mistake, no matter how many steps through your edit you are, this tool will always take you back to the original photograph that you started with. Um, and I hope you found that useful. If you did, please give me a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.